Twenty-ninth Rose Means of Salvation St. Dennis said that there is nothing more noble and more pleasing to God than to cooperate in the work of saving souls and to frustrate the devil's plans for ruining them. The Son of God came down to earth for no other reason than to save souls. He upset Satan's empire by founding the church, but the former rallied his strength and wreaked cruel violence on souls by the Albigensian heresy, by the hatred, dissensions, and abominable vices which he spread through the world in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries. Only stringent measures could possibly cure such terrible disorders and repel Satan's forces. The Blessed Virgin, protectress of the Church, has given us a most powerful means for appeasing her son's anger, uprooting heresy, and reforming Christian morals in the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. It has proved its worth, for it has brought back charity and frequent reception of the sacraments which flourished in the first golden centuries of the Church, and it has reformed Christian morals. Pope Leo X said in his bull that this confraternity had been founded in honor of God and of the Blessed Virgin as a wall to hold back the evils that were going to break upon the Church. Gregory the Thirteenth said that the rosary was given us from heaven as a means of appeasing God's anger and of imploring Our Lady's intercession. Jules the Third said that the rosary was inspired by God in order that heaven might be more easily opened to us through the favors of Our Lady. Paul the Third and St. Pius the Fifth stated that the rosary was given to the faithful in order that they might have spiritual peace and consolation more easily. Surely everyone will want to join a confraternity which was founded for such noble purposes. Father Dominic the Carthusian, who was deeply devoted to the Holy Rosary, had this vision. Heaven was opened for him to see, and the whole heavenly court was assembled in magnificent array. He heard them sing the Rosary in an enchanting melody, and each decade was in honor of a mystery of the life, passion, or glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his Blessed Mother. Father Dominic noted that whenever they said the sacred name of Mary, they bowed their heads, and at the name of Jesus they genuflected and gave thanks to God for the great good that he had wrought in heaven and on earth through the Holy Rosary, which the confraternity members say here on earth. He noticed, too, that they were praying for those who practiced this devotion. He also saw beautiful crowns without number, which were made of gorgeous, perfumed flowers held in readiness for those who say the Holy Rosary devoutly. He learned that by every rosary that they say, they make a crown for themselves, which they will be able to wear in heaven. This Holy Carthusian's vision is very much like that which St. John the Beloved Disciple had. He had a vision of a very great multitude of angels and saints who continually praised and blessed our Savior Jesus Christ for all that he had done and suffered on earth for our salvation. This is precisely what the devout members of the Rosary Confraternity do. It must not be thought that the Rosary is only for women and for simple and ignorant people. It is also for men and for the greatest of men. As soon as St. Dominic acquainted Pope Innocent III, with the fact that he had received a command from heaven to establish the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary, the Holy Father gave it his full approval, urged St. Dominic to preach it, and said that he wished to become a member himself. Many cardinals embraced the devotion with great fervor, too, which prompted Lopez to say, Neither sex nor age nor any other condition has kept anyone from devotion to the Holy Rosary. Members of the confraternity have always been from all walks of life, dukes, princes, kings, as well as prelates, cardinals, and sovereign pontiffs. It would take too long to give all their names in this little book, which is but a summary. If you join the confraternity, dear reader, you will share in the devotion of your fellow members, and in the graces that they gain on earth, as well as in their glory in heaven. Since you are united to them in their devotion, you will share in their dignity.